Hey everybody, it's Root Beer, and I'm here to do a profile on my Susano OTT deck. So first, my starter, it is Deity Spirit Loyalist Ikitsu Hikone. So he has two skills. First one is Oracle GB1, you can shove him to Soul Counter Charge. And then second skill is non-GB Auto, when your Vanguard with the Oracle ability is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you can Counter Blast 1 and shove him into Soul to draw. I'm kind of, kind of like flip-flopping between him and uh, the starter from GBT01, I can't remember its name off the top of my head now. I'm starting to like the other one better just because I value the extra draw more. I was kind of giving him a shot, I found that I haven't really used either of his skills very often, so... You know, probably gonna switch him out sometime soon. And How crazy would it be if you didn't have to shove it in soul? You just got the draw, so you mitigate your right minus every turn. That would be nice. Yeah. Although Sounds I'd have to not be an oracle for that to work. Right. Yeah. That's like the main problem is because the draw is connected to not being an oracle. This guy is like, mm. anyway. So for, for grade threes, first we run four of the new Susano. Oh, so he has a lot of text on him. First one is GB2 Oracle. At the beginning of your ride phase, you can check your top card, put it at the top of bottom. This is a really good skill. It helps you inform your next decision. So, like, if you still have soul to use a stride skill to draw, you can, you know, keep it on top if you like it. If you don't, you can put it away. You know, if you see a trigger, you can decide maybe you don't want to draw it, so you can guarantee yourself that trigger check. And then his next skill is an auto ability. If you have a face-up Amaterasu or Wakahirame in the G-Zone, you can Soul Charge 1. And then his stride skill is, you can Soul Blast 2 to draw a card when your G-Unit strides. So overall, this is a good card. I, I think this is the ideal ride for the deck. The other, Susano, is just too Counter Blast heavy, and, like, the other Grade 3 I'm going to run is just not your ride target at all. So, for next Grade 3s, I still run two of the old Susano, so... We're gonna see when I get to my next grade 3 choice that I really, really don't want to ride it. I know some people have been using Yasuka, which is the Oracle Searcher, and then she also has a rearguard skill on hit. I tried testing her for a little while back before the set came out on area. I just, I didn't like it. You know, it's not a plus, it costs an extra soul, which I'd prefer to use just on his stride skill, and then, you know, overall, I'm just, I didn't like it, so. Keeping the old Susano for just a little bit of right consistency, because I still prefer having extra draws with the stride skill. Then, finally, our last grade 3 is... I actually don't remember this guy's name. <laughs> Fighting Strike Sword Deity Toyo Kunishi. So, he's a 10k grade 3. At GB1, he attacks for a 14k if he attacks the Vanguard. And then he also has a continuous Oracle skill that... When you're in Oracle, you can intercept with him and he gains 5k shield. So, I mainly play this because he's a 14k beater. This deck really does have a really big problem with column pressure, you know. It's OTT, it's fairly weak overall. I kind of need as much pr column pressure as I can make, so... With a 7k boost, this guy is a 21k beater. I also use, like, Pressure's Ophidian, which we'll get to later, for to, like, get columns out of him. Just, overall, I needed to make more numbers, so just running this guy. So, for our grade 2 lineup, first off, we have four of him, so this is Deity Spirit Loyalist Ameno Oshiho. So, his first skill is Auto GB1, when it attacks, you can Counter Blast 1, check top 5 for an Oracle card, and then if you add it to your hand, he gains plus 3k, so he becomes a 12k beater, and he searches out an oracle unit. I really like this card. I think it was one of the better cards we got in the set, because he, give, he lets you search for an oracle unit, so you're getting selective draws instead of just blindly drawing. Uh, he becomes a beater, which this deck needs as much as it can get. And overall, you know, pretty good card. He also has a second skill where if you're not an oracle, you can put him into soul and draw a card. That's card. That skill is kind of pointless. You don't use it. I'd rather not minus myself to get more cards. I'd rather just find other ways to draw. Like, his first skill will probably just get you the cards you need anyway, so there's no real point for the second one. Then, we have three Four Doom Miko Sachi. So, what Sachi does is 
She has a continuous Oracle skill. She gains plus 2k, works on Vanguard and Rear Guard. So if you ride her, if you're an Oracle, she's a 10k vanilla. And then her second skill is a special Counter Blast. I run her because A, she has the Oracle ability, and we need as many as we can get for Oshiho to be a little more consistent. And then just riding her as a 10k vanilla is nice because sometimes I can deter a little bit of early rush with it. Is the 10k active on your opponent's turn? Yes, it's continuous, so. Fantastic. Right. It's just plus 2k in Oracle. So as long as I have five cards, she's 10k. Next. You run three Silent Toms. Tom's still pretty important in OTT, you know. He's one of our only ways of actually finishing it in games. Just stack triggers on him. Your opponent can't guard with gray zeros, and hopefully it works, and they don't G-guard it. Why are you using the Bandage Tom versus Walter White? Because I like Bandage Tom better. Walter White right. for life, right? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this is also the one they used in the anime, so apparently Bushiroad thinks this is correct. Touche. And then we have two of Battle Sister Mocha. She's just an 11k beater. This deck just needs something to swing with. I think other things you could run are like Rigid Crane for counter charging and soul charging, or what's the Amber clone called? Um, I totally forgot, but you just. Yeah. yeah, you can just use the Amber Clone too. I don't really like the Glimmer Clone because it uses a soul, and I don't like that. Then, Raid 1s. We run 4 PGs. I am running the Oracle PG because, again... Searchable? Yeah, searchable for, through this guy. And then, the Oracle skill is, at the at GB1, at the end of my turn, I can Counter Blast 1, get him out of the drop zone, and... My opponent, and then I just randomly bind the card from my hand. Usually I'll just let my opponent choose. That skill is honestly really, really awful, but there are times like I rode it or it went in damage and I healed him off and I just can't find any PGs and I really, really need one, so just kind of take the leap and hope it works out. And he can also randomly bind himself, which is awful, but again, what are you going to do? This is from the same company that made Dragsaber Ezras, which is like two very opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then three Stride Fodders. Striding is important, and I want to ride the new Susano instead of the old one, or God help me, the 10k, so this just gets me Susan basically translates into Susano 7, 8, and 9, in case I do get stuck with the 10k in my hand. 7, 8, 9? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Thriving Trade Ebisu, so he's a promo card. What he does is, when you're an Oracle, he gains plus 2k, and then if he boosts something with the Oracle ability, he gains another 2k, so he's a 10k boost. This is nice because, again, OTT, can't make numbers, and this is one of the few ways I can make columns. So he still functions as an 8k vanilla for Toms, and then if you do boost an Oracle unit, he's a 10k, so, you know, bringing back, where is it, this guy, you can get him to pretty decent numbers, especially off of the comp Dragon Destroyer Kamu Susano, so, yeah, I'm starting to value just making bigger beater columns, because that's really the only way I can make pressure in this deck, so, yeah, NBC is good. And finally, we have three Precious Ophidians, so... The Snack. The Snack. He has two skills. One is GB1 in Oracle. I can retire him to Strive for free that turn. And then he has a second skill. When he's placed and I have an Oracle Vanguard, I can Soul Blast 1 to draw. So this is really good because it helps you, you know, get a little bit extra for your early game. You can try and dig through your deck a little more if you're missing something or you just want to draw cards. You know. And then every now and then the free stride is relevant, like maybe my hand's full of a bunch of like grade twos and triggers. I don't want to drop too many cards because of Oracle, so I can just, you know, kill them off, get my free stride, and then keep going. So overall, really good card, really helpful. I like having him in my during my grade two turns to try and make a little bit of early rush. I think this deck needs as much aggression as it can get, so being able to just drop this guy, getting drop another card. Still getting a bit of aggression and still maintain Oracle for my 10k. Pretty good overall. And then, for my trigger lineup, I run four, eight, ah, 
12 crits. So, obviously we're running the Heart Thump clone for Susano. You need soul for the stride skill, and sometimes a little extra 5k is helpful because, again, OTT can't make numbers. We also have Psychic Bird. You can put him into soul draw, so sometimes with the Snack, I, you know, I soul blast draw card, but now I don't have enough to get Susano's stride skill off first stride, so... I can do it for that, I can just do it because I feel like soul charging for like Waka Hirame or something if I need to use that, or I just need to dig for like grade 2 or grade 3 if I'm missing something. And then, finally we have Battle Sister Muffin. We're running her because she's our going back into the deck uh, uh, archetype trigger, so you don't need to have a Battle Sister Vanguard to just put her back in the deck. and. Crit triggers are the only other way that this deck can win, so if I end up drawing too many of her, she just shove her back in, hope I dry track her instead of drawing her. And then... For heals, we run Lozenge Magus because she can be a convenient, easy eight, uh, 6k boost if we're lacking in our hand, and then she'll just go back in the deck afterwards. No reason not to run her, especially since... You can deck thin pretty well with Oshiho and all your other stuff that lets you selectively draw cards. So you have a pretty decently high chance of triggering every stride. Then, going into our G-Zone. First, we have Sabreeze. Pretty self-explanatory. If your opponent decides to play the stall game, you just counter blast 2, get Sabreeze. That is one place where this card can be kind of helpful, because like, okay, pay the cost for Sabreeze. If you're still an Oracle, shove him the soul, counter charge, do the rest of your shit. Oh, so Sabreeze, pretty self-explanatory. You run... Two Spiritual Deity of Benevolent Sagume. So she is Oracle, when she attacks you can flip up, and then she gets an on-hit. You draw two, discard one, counter charge, soul charge. So, I think this is probably the most ideal first stride if you couldn't G-guard into it. It gives you a decent amount of on-hit pressure. If you do hit, you know, you get to draw and filter your hand a bit, and of course you get back your counter charge and soul charge, which is nice. I have two of her just because, like, I have room in the G-zone, so I just use the other one as flip fodder. Next. Four, Dragon Destroyer, Common to Susano. So, he is one of the only other ways for our rear guards to gain power, so... He's an Axe, Persona Flip, you get an on hit, check top two, draw one, put bottom deck the other, and then all of your units get plus 2k. You know, you kinda need to make beater columns, because that's... We don't have any multi-attacking, this just gets you a little bit extra power to try and push a little harder. And again, it's the only way we can get power onto our rear guard, so... Yeah. Then we have one State Affairs Subjugation Deity, Kamu Susano. So he has a continuous skill in Oracle, gains 5k and a crit. And the nice thing about this is that if you're not an Oracle when he attacks, your drive check will add to your hand afterwards. So the continuous power will apply before damage step. So if your opponent decides to, they hear the number you give them and then they decide to underguard, you might be able to get that little bit extra in and hit and maybe steal the game with it. And then, his other skill is auto when he's placed, counter at GB2, counter blast 2, draw until you have 5 cards in your hand. So if you're just getting your ass completely whipped and you need to recover, you know, stride this guy, counter blast 2, draw up to 5 cards, and then if you happen to have 2 soul, you can get your 6 card. You know. So he is our recovery card. And then, I still run 2 sword of the... Thunderbreak, Takemikazuchi. So, maybe wondering why I'm running Takemikazuchi still when we have Kamu Susano. Thing is, Kamu Susano will only, like, get you back to 5, so the closer you are to 5, the less worthwhile it is, because if you're at, like, 3 or 4, you know, you're counter blasting 2 to get a couple cards, and you're blindly drawing instead of being able to selectively search your top 4 with Takemikazuchi. And also, there's just, like, really aggressive matchup like Nova's or Grand Blue, where even if you do still have a decent number of cards, you know you need more, so this guy will get you an extra two to try and hopefully get through it. And then, finally, we have two Wakahirames. So, on attack, you Counter Blast, Soul Blast, at Oracle. Uh, draw a card, put one card back on top of your deck. So... This kind of lets you guarantee a trigger. I don't really use it as a finisher anymore. I still think that 
trying to go for beater columns with Kong Susano is better, and then with Oshio giving you selective draws, you can deck thin more efficiently to try and trigger your opponent more. Like, usually I use Wakahirume now as just kind of a recovery card so that I can, if I have a heal trigger and I'm at like 4 or 5 damage and my opponent's at less damage than me, I can just attack, put the heal trigger back on top, heal, try to stall the game out mo a little bit more. And then finally, G guards. You have two Son of Eternity on Matarasu. So, Ami's a great G-Guard. When she's placed on Guard Circle, you can Soul Charge 1, then chuck your top card, put it on top or bottom. So, you know, it just lets you see... Maybe you think you need a damage trigger, so if you see it, you can just leave it there, take a damage trigger, give yourself a little bit breathing space, or, you know, if it's the last attack of the turn, and maybe you want that card that's on the top, you can just leave it there, draw it, and if not, put it on the bottom, try again. And then, it... If you have four or more cards in your hand, she gains 10k shield, so she's our 25k G guard. Fairly easy requirement overall. The only reason I'm running two and not more of her is just because the soul charge is mandatory, and this deck can have deck out problems, so I don't want to speed it up any more than I already am. So, because of that, I'm still running two Ichibiyoshis. Comes in clutch sometimes, maybe if my opponent's attacking for a small number and I don't want a soul charge right now, I can just guard with him. Or if I have four cards in my hand and I still need a G guard for around 31k, I can just go into him too. Yeah, pretty simple. That's it? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, rate, comment, subscribe, we'll see you all next time.